January 28th, 5 o'clock, BEDC board is called to order. At this time, the BEDC board reserves a right to convene into executive session uh, to consider the items uh, in the executive item is session, sections 551071, uh, 921 Main Street, consultation with attorney AEI Technologies, as well as consultation with attorney deliberation about purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property, deliberation regarding economic development negotiations on Project Kitchen. Time is 5.45. Uh, BEDC reconvenes into session. Okay, we're open for public comments. Do we have any public comments this evening? All right, moving right along, regular business 3.1. Approval of meeting minutes of the Best Bastrop BEDC regular board meeting of December 17th, 2018. Move to approve. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 3.2, acceptance of the Bastrop EDC's financial summary reports for periods ending November 30th, 2018 and December 31st, 2018. Great. Um, just in the interest of time and ease, I'm actually going to skip 1130s because all those numbers are in 1231. So let's just go forward here. So um, as you can see, our uh, fiscal year revenue in November was 208,000, December was 221. Um, our expenses were about 81 and 141. So uh, we are well below, um, uh, our expenses are well below our revenue, which we hope to continue. Um, also, for forecast, uh, the sales tax revenue is tracking about 6% higher uh, than the forecast have uh, in our budget, and we're still uh, well below, again, our budget, so we're tracking well on the budget is, is the point. So we'll continue to try and do that. Uh, operating expenditures comparison, Personnel is a little over. We'll address that next month because um, we are heavy one person uh, from when you all did the budget back in July. So that's going to continue to uh, be a deficit until it's fixed um, with a budget amendment, which we'll take up in February. Um, supplies and materials, same thing. Um, I think in November it was a negative. That's just because I was still new. Fallon was still new. Uh, so we, we have bought some supplies uh, and materials. Uh, maintenance repairs, occupancy. That shows up every time, and what we've figured out is that's just a timing problem. When we pay rent, thank you. Um, I couldn't figure out where that was coming from. Um, but I just pay our rent, and then it just always hits negative. It's a timing problem. We're actually not over budget. It's just a timing issue. And then contractual services, that is uh, the remainder of um, Shane being on our staff. So that should not inflate any further than what you see on there. He was uh, budgeted under contractual service, which is why that is what it is. Um, so forecast to actual is 11.59%. Um, expenditures budget to actual. So trails, there's three items. Uh, trail system loop, uh, we budgeted 629. We've only spent 800. Uh, we're actually going to get started in earnest on the trail this Friday with the city and TxDOT. Um, I don't really want to talk about it right now, so <laughs> we'll let you know after that meeting. Uh, what the real numbers are. They've changed quite a bit, um, and so we'll, we'll come back to you all with that. Even with the change, though, know that the budget that we, the amount that is in the budget would cover the changes that we've seen. We just don't necessarily like it, so we're going to try and figure that out a little bit more. Mike, but, when you bring it back, and I know we don't want to get into the detail, it would be helpful. We have some new board members. Yes. We kind of need to do the, here's how it all began, and, and walk through it time-wise, I think would be beneficial so that you don't bring us something and then we're asking you lots of questions. Me, me too, because um, it started before me. Uh, so this Friday, I hope to learn um, a great deal about this project and where it started and how we got to where we are and where we're going with it. Um, uh, business industrial park tech MLK infrastructure, again, there's only been a little bit uh, expended for design. Um, on that project, we're in a very good place with both the city and the county for that detention pond that we need to build uh, to make the road happen. And so we're going to have, we've had preliminary meetings with the city and the county about that because there's some things that need to happen to make all of that work. Um, but we have, 
that all squared away. So city council should be taking that up soon and commissioner's court should also be taking that up soon. So MLK, uh, an industrial park uh, technology MLK will start hopefully soon. Um, we're just getting the paperwork out of the way. Agnes Home Depot way infrastructure, um, that actually is, in this case, an addition to <laughs> that uh, budget. I, I'm not sure what 730, but we're basically on budget. I'll talk about Agnes a little later in the uh, presentation. And then the, the fund itself, you can see uh, revenues are 3.2 million, um, and so we're, we're, we're doing just fine on revenues versus expenditures. Any questions on that? And that's just our future debt obligations, you can see. Any questions? Sam, anything to add to the financials? Great. That's it for that one. So. Okay, do we have a motion? Make a motion to accept the financials for November and December. Second. Second. Okay. All approve. <laughs> Kevin said it. Passed. Okay. Um, 3.3 Consideration, discussion, and possible action on Resolution R 2019 0001, approving an amendment to the agreement with 921 Bastrop LLC. Let's talk about it in executive session, just uh, for, for the public, I mean, it is just a 120 dollars, 20 day extension in essence to uh, Stone Cobalt to continue marketing 921 for a tenant. So we don't have to go find a new developer. Any discussion? Ah, yes. Um, so uh, other things about 921 while we're on it, um, the remediation of the walls has, has uh, it says completed. When I wrote this, it was supposed to have been completed. Uh, they're still working on it, but it should be completed by this weekend, um, which will, uh, it, it prevent further damage to the adjacent structures um, and then we're revising the timeline to keep the developer on the hook and then uh, we in addition to stone cobalt marketing BDC is also marketing it so there's two of us working on it. Any comments discussion? <clears throat> Do I ever would you like to offer anything at this time? Do I have a motion? Yeah, move that we approve uh, oh, resolution, okay. let's see, it is R 2019-0001. Second. All those approved? All those opposed? Yes. All right, 3.4, consideration, discussion, and possible action on resolution R 2019-0002. Approving a single amendment to the agreement with AEI Technologies to provide the payment for the sixth full-time employee in the amount of $9,333. Thank you, Cameron Cox, your attorney for the public. And what I'm recommending to the board is uh, to approve the disbursement with, with the amendment to the agreement that an affidavit be made by the president and owner uh, stating that he is a full-time employee under the definition of the performance agreement for the conse previous consecutive 12 months. And I'm requesting a motion uh, after discussion from the board on that, uh, on that request. Thank you. Comments or discussion? Well, do I have a motion? Make a motion to accept resolution 20 R 2019-002, along with the amendment with the affidavit for unemployment from the president. I second. All those approve? All right. Opposed? It passes. <laughs> and 3.5, consideration discussion and possible action on resolution R 2019-003. Approving a 20% match to the City of Bastrop's grant pledge for the completion of Agnes Street that will have an immediate significant economic impact to Bastrop by making large tract properties accessible and marketable for industry attraction. Thank you. Um, we all are familiar with that current Agnes extension project right behind Seton. You can see on that map it's in the green. Uh, that is currently under construction, underway, and the only delays we're aware of are weather related. Otherwise, it is full steam ahead. If you go drive down 304, you can now, it's cleared all the way. So you can see exactly where the road is. Also, the side note on Seton, actually, I'll get to that later. Um, 
Yeah, I was going to so, say, they got their first wall up. Um, so current Agnes extension is underway. So what we're talking about is that yellow remaining portion that is just where it could go. Uh, we actually did pay for design work, which I brought to you, I believe, in October um, to pay for. Um, so we have the design for Agnes uh, part two. So there's an EDA grant. You may or may not know, Bastrop County was uh, declared disaster from Hurricane Harvey. And so there's EDA um, uh, grant money for disaster for Hurricane Harvey affected counties, of which we are one of them. Now, this grant is to be used for economic resilience as well as some other things. Um, and we can kind of check a lot of boxes with this. As, as the resolution states, we can open up, it's about 107 acres of land that that opens up for development immediately. Um, which is a really big deal. So we, resiliency is something we can absolutely point to. Furthermore, it ties in with TxDOT's um, planned removal of the lights down 71. 71 is a major evacuation corridor from the coast, and the reason those, the real reason why those lights are coming out is to facilitate that evacuation. And so if something were to happen on 71, right now you're kind of stuck. This provides an alternative route around 71 as well, so it, it provides some relief to 71 in some ways, besides the commercial aspect that we, as an economic development corporation, really want to see. So for those reasons, um, BEDC has been working with the city on an application. And as part of that application, we're asking for $1.5 million to build this road. For reference, the bond for the current Agnes Extension project is 1.25. So we asked for a little bit more because it's about a year later. Um, and so we think, it's, and it's almost exactly the same distance. I mean, within about 100 feet. So it should be about right. But a 20% match is needed. So that means someone needs to come up with $300,000. So what we're saying, and I support as executive director, and it goes with what the BDC, I believe, should be doing, is we can get a $1.5 million road for $300,000. Not to mention what that's going to open up of those 107 acres. There's two landowners that that crosses. Both of them have agreed to donate the land um, for the right of way of this road. So there's no purchase of right of way within this 1.5 million. So they are partnering with us by donating the land. So that helps us get the deal done as well. It shows partnership for the EDA grant, which is fantastic, not just between us and the city, but also the landowners are in this as well with skin in the game. And of course, they have the most to gain by this as well, besides the city and the BBC. So that is the proposal uh, we're asking you to consider, and we'll take up the amendment again next month if, you, if the board agrees for the $300,000. Uh, certainly we have it in the fund to do that. Um, it's a quick process. We should know within 45 days of submitting whether or not we need to submit the full application, and you don't submit the full application unless you're gonna get it. So we will know within three months whether or not this road is happening. Um, and they'll we'll start it very very quickly after that. So, is there any amendment to the current bond that we have, or is this going to come out of our current budget that we have? It'll have to come out of the current budget because this actually won't be a BEDC project; it will be a city project because they are the the end ownership of the road. They have to submit it because they'll own it, so they'll actually run the entire project. Literally, all we're doing would be the twenty percent match. They'll choose the construction company. Uh, the engineering, all that will be city driven. As part of the package that you presented on the grant proposal, did that include documentation that those property owners agreed to the right of way? Yes, we have asked, asked them for letters. We don't have them in hand, but this, it will not be submitted without those letters. Okay. We have a draft of both of them, and they just need to get us final drafts, and then they'll be submitted with it. It ends up costing $2 million. Who pays the difference? That would be between us and the city to, to figure that out. Well, this is, it's an incredibly, um, I think it's, it's very much needed. It creates an artery that doesn't exist uh, traffic wise. It, again, like you say, opens up all that land for development. I mean, to me, this is a, no-brainer. Words of the city manager. <laughs> is there a timeline on what, how fast the money has to be spent from the grant? I'm not aware of any, um, but they expect I, the ex expectation is that it will be used quickly 
given that it's for disaster declaration areas, it should be a project that's ready to go, not something that we think we want to do this, but we need money. We have a need. They expect it to be done, but I don't believe there is a, I could be wrong. I'm not aware of. We just need to be aware of that because yeah. one of the things that could drive up the price is if we have to expedite because we're trying to spend them, you know, it can end yeah. up costing, if if there's a time frame that we think we're going to have a problem. I hope not. I'm with Kevin. This is a no-brainer. We need to get it done, but um, I just don't want to find out later that the devil was in the details that we only have X amount of months to get it completed. The other thing, and I know everybody already knows this, but the, um, ultimately that road's going to be built. Yeah. Whether it's with this grant, whether it's with EDC money, whether it's capital, we're going to have to have that connection. So it would be awesome to get going on the engineering because you're going to get a better price when you have a contractor that's already mobilized in the area. It's a whole lot easier to keep going than it is to start yeah. all the way over new. And that's one of the ways that we can try to avoid having cost overruns. Because from my perspective, it doesn't matter if it's EDC dollars that have been collected for EDC or city tax dollars. We just need to be spending every single dollar as efficiently and as effectively as we can. And in my opinion, that means the sooner we get to market and put that out to bid, the better off we are. Are there any drainage issues that we're aware of on building that road? Because I know we're, we're putting some stuff in on the on the current act. We, we are participating in that drainage. Um, no, this would not affect that, that drain, same drainage, Gene, right? The same drainage work? Yeah, that, that same drainage is, that drainage channel is designed to capture When they that whole built the pond, it was knowing that the whole road was yeah. going to be there. So it's a great question, but that had to be a part of the original design. Yep. Okay. Any more discussion? Do I have a motion? Make a motion to uh, continue with the, 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 the grant and that we approve, uh, re re approve resolution R-2019-03 <laughs> up to a maximum of $300,000. Second. Do we have a second? Yeah. I'll second that. All those approved. All those opposed? <clears throat> Passes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Oh, wow, 3.6, update on EDC staff activities, marketing, prospects, projects, agreements, events, and all the other stuff. All right, thank you. So we've been up to, um, so January, uh, Jean attended January Chamber Luncheon. Uh, we also did uh, and hosted, I believe, the, we believe in BSD, the Bastrop High School, and provided breakfast for the Hunter Point teachers and staffs. So Jean and Fallon both attended that. Uh, Jean and I went to Fort Worth to attend the ICSC Red River Conference in January 9th through 11th. For those that don't know, I, ICSC is for shopping centers and retailers, so that's us trying to get more and better retailers to Bastrop and telling them uh, about that. So we had a booth. Uh, Adina Lewis with the county uh, attended with us and helped man the booth when we were out having meetings, so thank you to Adina for that. Um, we also went to New Republic Studios on January 17th. Um, and then uh, attended the best breakfast here this last Friday, and the mayor was there as well. It was very well attended, and hopefully a good model for moving forward on the best breakfast. And thank you to Representative Syria for yes. attending the breakfast and giving us an update. <clears throat> Business activity uh, matrix. So out of region visits, as I just mentioned, we went to ICSC in January, not December, so that's why it's not there. Uh, source of leads, so we had two, so that means we have four on, on the year. Uh, internal leads were one, uh, and external leads. So we got one from the state, we got one from our company. So on the whole, we're 50-50 internal, external, uh, which is good. Those numbers don't add up, so we'll continue to refine this as we go forward. Uh, prospect follow-up requests, so that's just Gene bugging people about coming to Bath Drop Me, bugging companies to say, hey, did you get what we sent you? Um, or they have questions back for us, all these projects we're working with. Prospect visits, one new one, one repeat. Those are great, so four on the year. Uh, we'll continue to track all this. Um, we have some great projects going right now that hopefully I'll be able to share some with you next time. Uh, and I hope to see some of those announcements start ticking up shortly, so stay tuned. Fiscal year 19 year to date leads by industry. So this is again, if we won everything that came through our door, we'd be looking at over 2,500 jobs, 2.7 million square feet and $1.1 billion worth of CapEx. Uh, you can see it's still overwhelmingly general manufacturing. But we're starting to get a little more diverse from the last time you saw it. We're seeing tourism in there, uh, IT, and biotech, which is 
you know, those are some of the ones we're really, not so much tourism, but biotech and IT, I'd love to see up there. Uh, so we'll continue to track this and see how diverse we get year over year. This also gives us an average um, project size, which again, helps us fine tune our marketing as we move forward with, with those as well. Business retention expansion, on uh, four total engagements in 2018. We weren't tracking it in 17, which is why you see zeros, but you'll start to see that fill in when we, when we get a year from now. Two in-person visits and assistance requests is when a company just asks us for help with something. I have an idea, or, or who do I talk to at the city to get this done, or we make a call on their behalf. Doesn't necessarily have to be us asking questions about their business per se, but just helping them out. And then workforce development meetings. What are we doing to help companies uh, better uh, find workforce? So you can see total engagements for the year is 12 uh, and how that, that breaks out. This month we really start doing more BRE visits. So we'll start actually sitting down with executives at companies for about 30 to 45 minutes to really understand what are going on in their companies and get a better idea of our existing business here. Website analytics for December, 900 unique visits. Um, about 90% were new, 10% uh, returning. Uh, out of 34 states, 31 countries. Uh, the blog continues to be a top page visit, so that's something we're still working on to, to continually improve. Uh, and then this bottom bullet point is just where they found us. Where are they coming from? States still, Texas obviously overwhelming. Illinois, uh, Virginia, California, New York, again, Outside of Virginia, Illinois, California, New York, we traveled all those places for a reason. They are looking at us because the same reasons we're gonna visit. Um, so it's really good that our target markets are finding our website. <laughs> Social media engagement, so you could see quite a big improvement over December of 2017. We didn't track Twitter followers or LinkedIn, but Facebook, that's quite a bit. So we're up to 5,100 uh, total likes and followers across all social media. Now. Fallon has been very, very busy since we've hired her, but she's doing a great job. We, I didn't know this isn't in your packet because we didn't have it when we posted it, um, and I didn't think we'd have it today, but we got a rough, the first edit, well, first cut of two videos, and they're not gonna stay this way, but they're pretty close. And so I really want you to see it tonight uh, so you can understand our vision, the look and feel we're gonna go for uh, as we do this. So. Uh, have a look.
find out in your own process. So for all practical purposes, is the same. <laughs> That video is to highlight companies in town, what they do, and the cool stuff, and how it's done. Like I said, we're going to change some things. There's some gaps that Cal and I don't like, and some things, but like there's a lot of pouring of molten, like uh, molten metal in there. We're going to kind of shrink that a little bit, you, you, anyway. But so we're working on it. But the overall, that's the field. So look at this cool company, all the stuff that they employ. I mean, they're working with alloys. They're they're they're, they're doing all sorts of cool stuff at Deep in the Heart. So. We want people to know that. So we're going to uh, do this next with um, New Republic Studios. Um, this is going to be our next stop with that same type of video. And then after that, we're actually going to go to the school district and do the robotics at the school district so we can really highlight BISD doing the robotics with the kids. So that's one video we're doing. The second video series that we're doing is more about, um, how would you describe it? So what does Clint have to say about doing business in Bastrop? So the why do business in Bastrop? So as a companion piece. The initial move to Bastrop was just based on the fact that the founder was here and all had an opportunity to buy a foundry. Four employees and we were operating at about 1,200 square feet downtown. We immediately operated the facility and started renting other spaces downtown. And so I started talking with the city and, uh, and you know, First National was always in our bank. And uh, they introduced us to the EDC. We found out about the industrial park out here. And uh, so they incentivized us to, to move out here. We had a nice, beautiful four and a half acre track of land. That shop is growing. That shop is growing at an uh, unbelievable speed. Um, it's a very proximity to the airport, very proximity to Austin, uh, it's not in the middle of all that, and uh, so we're, we're close to a lot. There's also a very really nice and centrally located in between Houston and Dallas, San Antonio, so you know, it's, uh, it's a couple hours to be honest with any of those major cities that uh, we're going to be headed. Um, this is a very, very uh, welcoming community. It's a uh, uh, built-on relationships. So There's a you know, great you know, foundation here of people who want to support each other. And, uh, and the city has got big people in place, and you can see other people in place. And it really has been a fast one going from this little town to this you know, urban area outside of Austin. It's got all of this kind of stuff happening. We've often wondered if we should move to another city or change, you know, we could have grown and grown and grown. But every time we've come to a point of growth, Stepped up and you know, uh, you know, the team partner with us so we created more jobs and got more equipment. And, uh, uh, so at this point, I think we have 26 dollars per week in the chair of two facilities, and uh, we have 34 full time employees with full benefits. audiences we're trying to hit with these. So these are going on social media on our website, which we're going to completely revamp our whole website this year uh, to be more multimedia friendly. Um, as we talked about before, we're going to rebrand as well. So the rebranding, new website, all is going to happen at the same time. And that starts late next month. Um, so it's going to be an exciting year, um, but that's really what we're, we're going after. So um, I hope you like it, but I, I think it's going to do uh, some great stuff. Oh, thank you. Yeah. She started December 10th, y'all. <laughs> um, so we already talked about Agnes, under construction, no known delays other than weather related, 921 Maine, first phase of mediation will be completed this next weekend. Uh, we're still marking the buildings, we still have Caldwell and ourselves, downtown trail, mentioned revised costs, and the technology drive, we talked about all these already, so that is project updates. 380 agreement updates. So Jamco, uh, we added a couple, uh, Jamco, we're 50% through, uh, but the last payment, if they make their numbers, is due fiscal year 2019. So that uh, is done one way or the other this year, so we'll see how they report at the end of the year. AEI, we already talked about. There's only one more payment after this one since you did um, 
okay and approve that resolution. There's one more of 9334 uh, and it ends next year. Bucky's, uh, we inched a little closer. Uh, the actual agreement ends in 2022, but uh, judging by what they're, they're doing, they're doing about uh, 200, we're doing about $100,000 uh, a year in rebates. So uh, we will be done expected unless something really crazy happens and people stop going to Bucky's um, in 2020. <laughs> And then Burleson Crossing, likewise, and that's a 2023, and they're they're killing it as well. So we expect that to be completed in 2020. So um, a lot of these are gone in the next two years, um, which is good uh, because they're doing a really great job. They're doing everything we wanted them to do and more. Um, and so that will open us up and allow us to use some of that money for other projects that, and if we're doing our jobs right, we will have the need to do. Mike, before you go off of this slide, I want to just tell you that for me personally, this is the best way I have ever seen this information presented. It tells Good. a lot of information at a glance of how, how far are they, when, it, when is it contractually over, when do we expect it to be over. I, I, when I saw this on the, in the packet, I was like, this is the very best. Thank you for Good. that. We'll continue reporting it that way. Um, so every year, BDC, well, for the last few years anyway, there's been a launch event for small business that BDC has done. We're not going to do the launch event this year. Instead, we're working with the governor's office to host the 2019 Governor's Small Business Workshop for the Central Texas region. So Bastrop on September 12th, we'll host it right across the street at the convention center, um, and the governor's office will be paying for it, which is great. Uh, and along with our help, also be marketing it to, I believe, the 15, they have 15 counties in the Central Texas region. So if you live in Williamson County, you live in Burnett County, you want to go to this, you're going to have to come to Bastrop to do it. So we hope to have a pretty good crowd, and we certainly hope that our Bastrop small businesses will take advantage of this. We wanted the forum, Round Rock's already got the forum, but the workshop's really cool because it's a little smaller, but you can, it's interactive. The forum is very much talking at you, these are the things I've learned with my business, and here's what I would do if I were in your shoes. This is, you have a question for a CPA, there's going to be a CPA there. HR, anything you need to help make your business more successful, um, they will bring to the table here. Uh, and again, at no cost to us. So um, I'm really excited about that, but I'm, I'm just really happy to be partnering with the governor's office on this and hopefully get a little bigger crowd and audience uh, aware of what's going on here at Bastrop. So September 12th, right across the street. There it all is. Registration fee is $10, um, but obviously parking is free, so there we are. Um, and we've already done the executive session. That's it for my presentation. Any questions? Great. Do I have a motion for adjourning? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those approved? Opposed? We are adjourned.